This is Infection, the survival podcast recorded live on Tuesday, May 23rd, 2017, episode 123. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Infection, the survival podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. We bring you the latest news, reviews, updates, and more each and every week. My name is Nick Craig. At Nicholas M. Craig is my Twitter. Infectionpodcast.com is the website. I'm here in the WFBT studios in Wilmington, North Carolina, here on this Tuesday. I was going to say special Tuesday edition. Uh, it's not, but the Tuesday edition of Infection. I'm here putting in all the effort. Brian Aldridge is is relaxing, eating a potato in Boise, Idaho. Yeah. Hey, Brian, how are you? Yeah, I'm just sitting back, you know, love enjoying the sun, doing nothing, <laughs> new, no prep, just leaving it all up the next. <laughs> no prep. Hey, if you want to find me at Boise Computer on Twitter, or you're more than welcome to go check out my blog, biteoftech.com. That's B I T of tech.com. I actually posted three new articles this week, I think, on there. So, Wow. I am I'm in overdrive. When you skip like six months to a year, you got to make up for it all at once. So, um, so if you, yeah, if you're in, into, uh, mostly once again, it's, it's nerdy web hosting Linuxy stuff. So, uh, if you're into that, it may not be your tup- cup of tea, but you're more than welcome to go check it out and, uh, subscribe to it. So that way you get notifications and new posts on there. If you're looking for notifications of our show, so maybe you are a person who listens to it on the podcast form only and you would like to get uh, notifications of when our live show is going to start, I encourage you to go to our website, infectionpodcast.com. On the right-hand side, uh, look at Steam Group, join that, and you'll get a a little notification that pops up about 10, 15 minutes before the show starts. Uh, Also, if you would like to to join us, we're going to be doing a Friday night game night this week. Um, We have on Saturday nights, a couple times, uh, once a month or so, we have uh, a board game night that we do. If you would like to participate in one of those, you can go and join our Discord group. We put notifications in there as well. So uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see join. It'll have a kind of a sample of what the Discord channels look like. And then uh, a join button. You click that, it'll add, a, add you to our Discord. And then that's a great way. As I mean, Friday the 13th is coming out this weekend. Uh, we play a lot of Battlegrounds, there's Overwatch, I mean, just a bunch of games that we play. So you're more than welcome to click that and you'll be able to join us in game when we play those. So, yeah. Yeah. So how are you, I think that's all the promotion. I'm doing good. Um, man, in Boise, it's beautiful. I I, I know you were saying when I talked to you on the phone that it's raining and and looks like a month, pre-monsoon over there, but here... It's uh, a beautiful T-shirt weather. Well, it's T-shirt weather here. The interesting thing about uh, being on the coast and I guess any coastal area is it will downpour for five minutes and then it is it is beautiful out uh, right after that. Yeah. So it um, it was monsooning and it's now a great day, you know, hanging out at the beach, you know, doing 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 the beach things uh, that, that you do when, when you're on the that's, coast. That's a rough life. Yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's an awful life. Uh, you know, podcasting, hanging out at the beach, you know, all the typical things that successful podcasters do. Um, so, yeah. So, you're going to be a, a, one of those vlog- vloggers or whatever. You're going to walk around with your webcam on a selfie stick and or your phone <laughs> on a selfie stick and record your life. I, yeah, I could do IRL on Twitch, hanging out at the beach with Nick, infection podcast style. I'm, you know, talk about yeah, getting partnered right. on Twitch. That's the way to do it. Yeah, I'm sure instantly. It'll be, a, it'll be what it is. So, um, so do we want to just jump into the news? Do we have anything else? Do we want to talk about for our Friday night game night? I did do a poll. Oh, to okay, see cool. How many people could, we did discuss doing um, doing Friday the 13th this weekend since it is releasing on, on uh, Friday. And one thing is I did get, so I, the infection, us as infection, we received a, kind of a streamer's key or a um, person, uh, you know, pers- person, I don't remember what the term they use. They had some weird term for it, but uh, we received a key that actually lets me play now. So I did play it some today. So I am very confident that it will actually be released on Friday. 
being wow. that I actually was able to play it today, I'm pretty sure that there's not going to be something all of a sudden between now and Friday that breaks everything and they're not going to release. So, oh yeah, content cool. creator. So we got yep. a content creator key. So 63% of the people said yes, they have it or they will have it by Friday. So, um, so that was out of eight votes. So five people said they'll have it. Three people said that they don't or won't. So I, um, what do you think? I will, I will do my best. I have a 14-hour ride home uh, that I will be partaking yeah. in Thursday. Um, so it all depends on... Uh, all depends on that. But I, I mean, I think Friday 13th would be a great game if it comes out. Okay. Yeah. So let's, let's plan on that. I mean, we can always fall back onto something else if for some reason it's getting to the time and they're saying, oh, well, there's something, you know, something's wrong or, but they did send out keys like, like the one yeah. that I, I paid for. They sent me the key for it today so I can preload it. So everybody is able to preload it. So the second that they unlock it, um, they will be able to, th you know, they'll be able to download it and they'll be able to play it as soon as it is unlocked. So it's not like something that we were running into before where, oh, people have, have a one, two, three, four gigabyte update or download or something that they have to do once it's released. You should be able to pre, everyone should be able to preload and yeah. be ready to go for Friday night when it's, when it's actually unlocked. Yeah. I really like the whole preload stuff, especially with games that are, like GTA is the, always the great example of a of a GTA game that's like fifty or sixty gigabytes. Being able to preload that any yeah. EA game, they most of the time allow you uh, to do some preloading on that. So that's uh, yeah, that's good stuff. I, I would say that works for me on Friday. Okay, so we'll so we'll plan on that. So it will we'll put it for Friday the thirteenth, unless for some reason you know they delay it, which I just don't see happening, especially since it's all preloaded. I mean, they may put out a patch. But I really doubt, and I have the ability to play it all the way until then. So it's not like they're going to cool. shut it off right before. So, um, and I may, I can't stream it until tomorrow. Okay. Um, so today we're under embargo until tomorrow on it. Uh, so maybe tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow a little bit, I will be able to stream some uh, cool. so that people can, can see it because it should be ready to go at that point. You know, it's interesting. Um, we were pretty tough on the um, on the developers and how they kind of treated the community, so on and so forth. And you know, today I've just got another example of this. So somebody tweeted out, uh, made a fake Friday the 13th profile on Twitter and tweeted out that the game was being delayed. That happens all the time. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this is a common thing. So they write, quote, some jackass posted a fake thing, a Twitter thing where a delay was announced, it is fake and clearly does not have the blue check mark. So they're pretty much saying you're stupid if you didn't realize that it didn't have the blue check mark. I mean, what kind of tweet is that to send out? No. Some jackass posted a fake tweet. Uh, a tweet. I mean, really? And then, and it clearly does not have a blue check mark. I mean, the snobbery of that is ridiculous. I think they should be act like they're more of an informing type. Like, say, we're informing no. people that this is. I mean, they should have done that. They didn't. Rather than say, I mean, I mean yeah. clearly they talk how you, you use, they talk how you talk. Exactly, exactly. They they're, they're, they talk they're exactly like, like I talk. No, it, it, exactly. I mean, I don't walk around to people and say, "Well, clearly this and clearly that." When you know, I can, yeah. you can act like a professional when you want to act like a professional, and then act like a a jackass when you want to act like a jackass. But I just can't believe yeah. that they, that they put that into it. It is fake. Dot dot. And clearly, clearly, does not have a blue check mark. That really irritates me. Yeah. Whatever. I don't know. That's just how. I mean, I mean, that's just the personality of. I don't. There's not really a filter on them, or there's. I don't know, but there is a filter because he was saying all that. I don't know. They they need a no. good media person. Absolutely. To sit there and filter them. I, yeah. I think if they and had I, like, that's one thing that battlegrounds. I mean, they put all that stuff in the media. You know, he'll he'll still tweet, but like media people take care of a lot of the public relations, battlegrounds. And we saw when we were at PAX just how professional and everything was handled very yep. in a very particular way with them, in a very professional way. And it wasn't a, hey, we're just going to go do this and we're going to do that and, you know, screw you. Like they, they took good. When we walked in there, they respected us. You know, they let us have our time. Um, 
you know, it wasn't, oh, is someone else going to walk in that's maybe a little bit bigger and we'll push you guys out of the way. No, we, we had our time and they, they were very professional about it. And I pr appreciate that. And I think it's important for companies like this to actually treat every, everything professionally, which these guys haven't done. And, w and that's one thing we commented on was in that, in, in that midnight thing or 10 o'clock thing that we did, just how, how, how I commented about how unprofessional they were communicating with each other, which turned me off to the whole, I just didn't like it made me feel uncomfortable yeah. sitting in the audience personally. Yeah. And, and, and it's interesting. Some of the work I'm doing down here in North Carolina uh, also kind of uh, bleeds over to the PR sense. And you would not be surprised how many people are unwilling to pay for PR. I mean, it's just something yeah. that you, as a business, in my opinion, in a business, if you're a large enough business that you need PR, case in point, you're a video game with 70,000 followers um, uh, you know, on, on Twitter, you probably have some money to invest in in PR. I mean, this game is selling for forty dollars a pop. They're they're going to be making. A, I think it's probably cost them more. Bad PR has probably cost them more in key sales that they didn't get. Absolutely, would have cost them for having a good PR person that managed and made their personal, their public facing everything just a little bit cleaner, so they wouldn't have such negative comments. Yeah. So, um. So before we get into any actual news that um. The typical games to talk about Battlegrounds, H1Z1, uh, Ark, so on and so forth. Let You want to talk about Red Dead Redemption, Brian? Yes. So, they well, they, they pushed it out a little so, bit. Um, yeah, that's what I want to talk about. So there's, you know, there's a couple of different ways to handle delaying a video game. And in my yeah. opinion, the way that Red Dead and Rockstar handled this was perfect. I haven't seen a bunch of controversy. I hadn't seen them. Everybody like, yeah, oh, man, because they they said it clearly, right? They 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 said we want to make sure that we and and it it's because of this is under a totally new uh, engine. Like they're redoing mm -hmm. this and trying to make it the best possible experience that they can possibly have. Uh, and they just they were very clear about it, saying. You know, we were originally planning for fall of 2017, but, you know, we we ran into things to where to be able to ensure the quality level and, and releasing you know, how we want this to be released. It needs to be in the spring of 2018, um, you know, yeah. rather than saying, OK, well, you know, rather than when you consider this, you know, maybe it's late, late <laughs> fall, maybe it's late, late fall. You know, there was none of that. It was just. We need to do it at this later date because we want to ensure the best possible quality product is released. And well, and there's I, a, I didn't question them at all on it. And there's a couple of things that go into it. Well, first of all, it's Rockstar. It's a developed game yep. company. I mean, they make some of literally make some of the biggest games out there. Uh, they there's have. no worry that they're not going to release it. Exactly. And that's something that the early access community and I'm not going to say unfortunately because they've they've screwed themselves with it. This is unfortunate. Again, it's not unfortunate. This is what the early access community has fallen into is this trap uh, because so many people have come into the community, taken a whole bunch of money and just left. Um, so, you know, that credibility, an early access game really doesn't have that. Can will never have that credibility. You know, for example, though, we talk about Ark. We had the we had that interview last week. Ark releases a second game yeah. or announces they're releasing a second game. People are going to pounce on it. Why? Because they've got credibility. They, they've got yeah. the credibility. Now the other thing too, and PH makes uh, makes the point, rocks. It was still pretty far away. They announced this was going to come out uh, a couple of. They announced this was it in December of last year that it was going to come out in fall of 2017. So we, at this point in time, yeah. we were still months away from it. Um, you know, and he says it wasn't three days before the release. That's why. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so the thing is, these these guys are planning out. I mean, they're making timelines and just saying okay what can we what are we going to have done by this time what are we going to have i mean these are these are guys that have been making video games i mean rockstar has been making top-notch video games for some time yeah and, and so these guys have down to the month of okay we'll be able to finish this part and probably a lot of it is going to be th this whole certification thing i mean getting cleared on all the consoles and they understand like they give themselves certain timelines it may be that they have this done at the very begin, beginning of 2018. They may have it done in January, but the thing is, is they know 
oh, it'll take us this amount of time max to be able to get this thing certified on consoles and certified in all these places. And they understand this. And that, I guess that's where we don't quite give as much slack to like Friday the 13th, for example. I understand that they haven't done that and they didn't realize how long it was going to take. Um, you know, these guys do. And so I think that they're just making sure they have enough time to where they don't all of a sudden, what was that game, that space game recently with all the facial animations um, that came Star out Citizen? here recently? No, 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 no. The, the one uh, no Man's that Sky? had all the crazy animation. Hmm? No Man's Sky? No, no, no. It was just no. came out here recently. But the, it was it was the one where they uh, they had so many, like, just crazy bugs in the game. Mass that Effect? Then they were like, oh, well, Mass Effect. Yeah, the new Mass Effect. It's mm -hmm. like, we're going to, we'll patch it up afterwards. Like it, they got themselves down probably so close to the wire and they didn't get themselves that buffer time with that game that when it got to the end and, and they're at that point of, oh, well, we said, here's where we're going to release. And they're like, well, do we have time to fix this? No, let's release it anyways. Like I, that's, that's bad. These, I, I think Rockstar is professional enough. Like they wouldn't, put out a Grand Theft Auto that they felt wasn't wasn't good and ready. And I think yeah. that they treat Red Dead Redemption because it's a big title now. I think they treat it in the same way. And so the big, I guess you could say the controversy behind the this update of Red Dead Redemption 2 is that it will not be available on PC, which um, which piss a lot of people off. Um, yeah. So, and, you know, I to wish be honest, it would be, but See, I, 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 I don't. Um, I, I really don't. Uh, Red Dead Redemption is one of those games that on a console where See, I never, there are... I, I still haven't played the first one, so that's... But that I, this fall, uh, I'll be playing through the first one. How, how much time do you think I need, should give myself to play to where... Oh, I, I mean, it's an open world game. Uh, yeah, yeah you, so you how much time should I give myself up. roughly? Like uh, you should months? start playing it. You should start playing it now. <laughs> okay. You think it's going to take that long? No, well, you just, I mean, you, unless you're going to play like 40 hours a week, um, I mean, it's a very long game. There's things to do forever. Okay. Um, but, you know, the interesting thing about this is I, I have been, while I am a, a PC master race uh, convert, um, there are still games that I prefer to play on the consoles. Call of Duty is a great example of it. Mass Effect is a great example of games that work unbelievably well on consoles, like, minus the last one. All the other Mass Effects were great. Um, and, and Red Dead Redemption, I think is in that same kind of genre and, and theme with that. I don't mind that this is out just on console. I, it really doesn't bother me at all. Um, and I know that's the unpopular opinion, but, uh, I mean, Rockstar is not stupid. There's obviously a reason that they're not releasing it on PC and it's not just to screw the PC yeah, people because I mean, GTA is insanely popular on the PC. There's gotta be some technical yeah. reason, uh, why it's not coming out. Okay, so this is the new engine too. So this is this is a new engine that perhaps isn't ready on PC. Possible. Um, there's a lot there's a lot less variables to deal with on a a PlayStation or an Xbox game because you know exactly what hardware is there. You know your limitations. Um, you know what you can get away with. And so I think it's a lot easier to get what you would consider a ready game on a PS4 or an Xbox, uh, especially when you're dealing with new something new. Uh, and so I, th I think that, you know, that could be a possibility is that this, because I i can't imagine them having what they call a new engine that might possibly have the next Grand Theft Auto on it and not having it for PC. Like, yeah. I just don't see that happening. I'm pretty sure that this engine will have a, a PC version at some point, and maybe we won't see the PC version of it until comes time when we're getting to, to a new Grand Theft Auto. I mean, that may be... And then they'll imagine how many sales they'll get on Red Dead Redemption 2 on this on PC after, uh, after all these people already bought it on console. Yeah, I mean... I think, I, it's, I, I, mean I think it's marketing. I think it's brilliant. Oh Well, for marketing, it's brilliant, but I would I would venture to say, I would probably piggyback on your theory there, Brian, that this is a, this is a new engine, and I would imagine the engine... I would say at this point i would bet that there was a delay in the engine that made that spring 2017 uh date not feasible yeah. so it was the engine that they had to push forward maybe a little bit 
Um, and if the, if if they're going to be cutting it close to the engine on the Xbox and PlayStation, it this game would be an, this game would be like Batman if they released it on the on the PC. I would imagine if it's truly an engine issue um, with with a new engine, yeah. it would be exactly like that. I don't remember exactly what Batman game it was, but it was the one that they literally were giving people back their money weeks and months after the game came out because it was an app. Abs- they pulled it off of Steam. That's how bad it was. Yeah, um, which doesn't have, so, happen very often. Yeah, and and you got to remember so, again. And this we, is we, something. We just, I'm I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. I was just gonna say, and they, and on that day they released some really cool screenshots. I think to kind of show people, hey, we are making good, good progress on this. Like there, it looks good. Like we're coming along. I and I think that was really smart of them to do. Yeah, and and the other thing to remember too is, we we were just talking about PR, Brian. You know, if you, they release this game on PC and it's a disaster, that is a PR nightmare. And for a company like Rockstar, that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So So yeah. hopefully, I mean, this game, it, it looks really good. I mean, that's the thing. And I made my, my guess that I think that a game like this is really going to push the genre. I mean, I have my prediction. There's a new game uh, like WWO, Wild West Online, that looks like it's going to be really good. Uh, that came out recently that they were going to do a Kickstarter for it. and But mm-hmm. it ended up, they were going to approach by investors who fully funded the max tier of the Kickstarter. So they never there put it go. on Kickstarter. That's the way to do I it. Mean, that, I'm telling you, I keep saying like piece, the, 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 this genre I think has not been, I think it's an untapped genre, I guess is the way to say it. I think that there's so much that you could do with survival games in a Wild West type of feel that i mean what's a good western open world game that you can think of brian i will i will look like a complete i will look like a complete jackass if this if your prediction comes true because i ridiculed you yes <laughs> absolutely and, and ridiculed like, you the piece are the pieces not starting to fall into place like each little thing <laughs> The Wild West Online doesn't even have to go to Kickstarter, and they get and the, and the company gives them the full amount of money that they could have possibly asked for. You can. I'm telling you, it's well, coming. Okay, that's fine. Um, Brian, I'm gonna have you just turn up your mic just a tad bit more um, sure. while we're doing this. Um, we right, are remote. Good. How's that? Uh, yeah, that that should be better. Uh, we we are remote, of okay. course, for this week's episode of Infection. Um, so we're having some some technical stuff that we're working through. It's gonna be a little bit different of a show. Um. But we do have some news, and the big update, the big news, uh, it's, a, it's a new month, which means new, uh, the, what, what, are the, what are they calling it, the, the content update uh, for Yeah, for so this is where they're actually making changes to the actual, yeah. uh, like, this is the month two update. So month one update, they actually came out with new things. Um, the month two update, they came out, they actually added some new features to it, so... Um, this one they announced. Do, do you want me to? I don't know if is your. Uh, are you able to pull up? Yeah, so I'm. I can do this one. I've got this one already prepared. So I'll do okay. this. This whole. This whole segment because I think I've got this pretty. Pretty well planned out. Um. So what they they announced is actually in the, to start it off. They said that they raised two hundred twenty three thousand three hundred fifty seven dollars for that charity event that they did a couple of months a couple of weeks ago rather. Um, through uh, the 128 Twitch streamers that took part in that, so that's a lot of money for 128 Twitch streamers. Um, yeah, uh, and, and I mean, they put the uh, they put the theory to bed. That's good. Yeah, it is. It's it's very good. Uh, and they, of course, they put the theory to bed that they're running on uh, potato servers, um, and uh, said that they're using the highest possible Amazon AWS servers that they can purchase. Okay. Now, here's one one thing though, Nick. Remember last week when we were talking to the developers of Arc, and he said that with Unreal Engine, it doesn't make so much of a difference of you having the top server. He said that the yep. the engine runs well on a two-core machine. Um, you know, I'm wondering yeah. if they're going to be discovering this. I understand you want to have the top machine, but it, uh, Unreal does not perform as well as it could as on dedicated hardware. And I'm, I'm thinking for the price that they're probably paying for the top end machine on Amazon, they're going to come to a conclusion. Hey, let's at least put most of these in house, you know, at a data center somewhere with dedicated hardware. That's, you know, a dual core, something that's not a huge expensive machine because these servers don't need those. Uh, Absolutely. I, I, I just have a feeling that that will come, that will come around to where 
as they do more tests and realize, or, I mean, they could talk to the guys at ARC, <laughs> you know, I would just say, hey, you know, what have you found? Because, I mean, he told us, you know, he wasn't shy about it. He said, hey, it runs better. You know, we're taking them off of AWS because, which is the Amazon Web Services, because it runs better on a dedicated hardware, like a dual core machine. That's just how, because Unreal does not run on all those extra cores. It's like a waste of a uh, of processor. Yeah, well, and it's interesting. Uh, it it took Arc and Arc's um, server team and, and and the server optimizers two years to figure out figure out you know that hey maybe AWS isn't the best solution. So, if I would imagine yeah. they'll be on it. I I can't. The, the, the process of migrating all your servers to something else, we saw it with Conan Exiles. It was a disaster. So I would imagine that they're on AWS for the, for, for the foreseeable future, um, you know, until they can really sit down and, and do a smooth update. Uh, as, as, you, as I said, Brian, ARC is still on AWS, even though they want to move. It's yeah. been two years. They're still on it. Um, so I would imagine that they're going to stay on that for a little while. But nevertheless, with this update, uh, it was announced and it will be hopefully hitting your game updates uh, Thursday. So that will be May 25th. Uh, they said it's going to take approximately an hour to complete. Um, I don't remember there being any issues with the last big monthly update, but I could be wrong with that. Mm -mm. Uh, so that, that will be taking place this Thursday. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things in here. I'm just going to kind of go through the some of the more important things in it. Um, so there's a couple of client performance things that I think are really important because this game does have issues running even on uh, even on a higher end or a, a you know mid high end computer. There are still some uh, graphics glitches, uh, and when I say glitches, I mean you know video performance issues, stuff like that. So the first thing is improved CPU usage uh, for world level uh, streaming, which is good. Um, uh, in, uh, improved render performance of the fences, the grass, uh, and then the weapons and the attachments seen at all distances. So a lot of these things, I would imagine, Brian, at one point, were they were taking a lot of resources to render out the fences in the grass, and it doesn't need to. Yep. You know, I'm I'm all for a game that looks good, uh, and, and you know, is this great scene when you look at it. But it comes to a certain point where yep. I care about performance more than I I really I, I hate to say it, I really don't care how the how the how the grass looks. I really it, it could look like a a bunch of pixels. I really wouldn't care because um, as long as my yep. performance is is good enough that I can go into a gunfight and not get killed. So fences, graphics. Uh, excuse me, fences, grasses, weapons and attachments, um, modifying certain weapons and vehicles, uh, the render distance for those, how they render at certain distances, uh, improved character animation performances, uh, improved effect performances, and improved performances of teammate nameplate, which was very weird. It would get stuck all the time. Even if somebody was dead, you could see it from all the way across the map, which is not how it was supposed to work. Yeah. Um, so some of those things are uh, fixed up here. Now, Brian, we do have two new pieces of content in this patch yes. what should people look forward to with that all right so they have what they're calling the vss um, this is a suppressed sniper rifle with a permanent 4x scope so once you find the gun um, you don't have to I, i'm assuming that means you can't remove it as well um, so yep, it has probably. a 4x scope on it and it's chambered for nine millimeter ammo which is something that you find all over the place um, uh -huh. you know you can you can always find tons of nine millimeters so if you can get an um um, so there's pistols that have them. Uh, this is a really good combination of that. It seems like they're trying to make those combinations of ammo to to have reasons to pick up each gun because um, the vector was 45 ammo, uh, even though before that was only used on a pistol. So I think they're really trying to make make a reason to uh, to have all this different ammo. And it says it can be found in care packages and as a very rare loot spawn. Um, so you, there's not a guarantee that you're going to find it every game and it gives people more of a reason to go for those crates. I think, so I think the sniper Absolutely. rifle, the big sniper rifle is very difficult to use. And, uh, you know, it's great once in a while if, if you can have that distance, but it's kind of a difficult thing to, to try to rely on, um, when people are coming at you. So, and then, um, do you want me to go into the next one? They have the new motorbike. Um, so this is like that bike that had the sidecar on it. Um, but this is just the motorbike now. And so that should be in this content patch as well. And they said that they were working on on this to where you'll be able to maneuver the bike when it's in the air so that, um, so that you can get some really cool tricks. They showed it doing a flip um, in another clip. And so you can uh, you can try to do different tricks. And I assume they're probably going to maybe 
adjust this a little bit so that um, it's not so easy to die on them, I mean, especially if they're encouraging you to do tricks and try to do big jumps and everything. I'm assuming it's going to be a little bit more difficult because right now it's really easy to flip and instantly die on the bike. So hopefully they make it to where you don't just instantly die as you're trying to do tricks on the bike. Yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. So, and, and you think this is going to be a two-person bike? Probably the um, same thing. No, Someone no, can ride no, on, up behind you. You know, I hope it's not. I mean, there's already just a single the, person. Yeah, I mean, the other thing is already because they have they have they have the two-person um, exactly. Buggy. Yeah. I, they've got I, three, I don't, three person bike, four person cars. I don't see why this. I don't see why this shouldn't be any more than one. Um, I just don't see a reason for it to be. Does it? It, no. it seems unnecessary. There's already. I, mean, I bet you they probably will for duos. They will probably add a second person on it. But I think you know. I I think it'd be just as good as if if you maybe they put it to where it doesn't have that second seat on it and it's just a single person bike for getting yourself places. But most well, this likely, is how, I think this they is, will make it two person. This is how I see it. If you play, if you and I play a duo right now, Brian, any vehicle we come across will take us anywhere we need to go. There, there's no yeah. chance of finding a vehicle that's not going to take us anywhere. Adding a single uh, person bike would, would, or adding a single person vehicle could allow me to find a vehicle and then have to go out uh, and leave you by yourself search to, to loot wh well, while I search cool for too, to Have two, both be riding bikes, you know, wherever you want to go. We won't be able to fire from them, but if they're fast yeah. enough and maneuverable enough, you can just try to get to a certain spot really quickly and then get off. Yeah, I um, so. it doesn't bother me. There's not a vehicle issue in Battlegrounds right now. Let's be clear with this. There are more. There are vehicles scattered all over the map. Um, so adding yeah. you know adding a couple solo spawned vehicles across the map, I don't think is going to uh, change anything drastically. Uh, it will most likely be a two, but I would, I would, I think it would be cool if it was a one. I think it would add another element of finding a vehicle, the similar way that when it, when you're playing a four, uh, three or a four, when you find the buggy, it's useless. Somebody takes it and drives out and finds a a, a four seater, or, 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 yeah. or a car or something. I think it would add that other element, but to uh, the the duos, which I think would be kind of neat. So. Yeah, I mean, I know that they're thinking if they're going to have them in duos, I know that they want to have. But whatever. I mean, however they do it, they can't really make a wrong decision. Um, you know, it's just, I yeah. know people will complain either way. <laughs> this is the way <laughs> I see works. it. No matter what they do with this, it's not going to change the game in, uh, at all. It's not going to break all. it. No, it's not. It, it, there's no drastic change that's going to come from this if they do add it as a two-seater or add it as a, as a solo. It, there's nothing that's going to change. Um, so to me, it's, I think it would be cool, but uh, it's not, not, not the end of the world for me. Uh, a couple of gameplay changes with this. Uh, reduce the moving speed. Of the uh, of the two final play zones for better engagement, that that is huge. I think a lot of people skimmed over that when I was reading. I didn't say a whole lot of conversation about this. Those last two zones came up so quick that you would just run. You'd be running yeah. across the field because the the zones on your ass and you're just dead because you're getting shot from somewhere that you can't even see because they moved unbelievably quick. Yeah, sometimes uh, you'd get some of those really bad bad positions to where and it seems like this happens a lot like it's on the totally opposite side of where you are um, mm -hmm. and you just find yourself running the whole time if you don't have a vehicle you're 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 getting to the next zone and then it's changing and then you're run you're constantly running again so and yeah. i think this is a good good plan i i think early game that the zones are go the go a good speed i i wouldn't want to change those zones i think that how it comes in there's not a huge amount of dead time if you happen to be on the wrong side of the map, you know, I would you, say you loot for a little bit and then start moving. Yeah, I would say previous to this update, the zones uh, across the entire game, how I how I felt the quality of the zones, I would say they were probably around an 80 or an 85. Uh, I mean, that yeah. sometimes at the end you would get kind of screwed. But um, with this with this new update, depending on how the, the how long, how much longer the time is, I mean, you're, you're looking at almost 100 percent done on, on zones. Uh, you know, of course, yeah. there's going to be little things here and there, but I mean, we're talking upwards 95%, uh, in my opinion, compared to H1Z1, who still, for 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 the life of me, I don't understand how they can't figure the out how, how the zones. Are. Yeah, they, they still have yet to figure out how to how to deal with zones. Um, but I, I, the zones were already fine. I mean, they kind of sucked, but they were fine. They were very playable. Now, hopefully, it's a little bit more playable, and 
and is good for that. Now, uh, they did a couple of balance passes on a couple of different weapons. The first one is the Vector, which they've only they only added a month ago. So in in just a short, probably three weeks while they worked on this, they, they've already the, they already put the gun in the game, collected the information, figure out what needed to be changed and then actually changed it. And they're going to be deploying that Thursday. So you talk about that quick turnaround time that we've been talking about. This this is case in point uh, what needs to be done. So for the Vector, it's uh, reduced bullet bullet damage slightly. Uh, I did see some people saying it was a little OP from, uh, you know, if you're right on top of somebody compared to some of the, like the micro Uzi or something like that. Um, uh, then, you know, the Winchester, they reduced the pellet damage and the AKM. They made a couple of changes. Uh, they increased the bolt damage for that, too. So nothing crazy on those. Um, or just, yeah, just balancing the weapons. General, that yeah, exactly. So OP. Yeah, tweaking things here and there. Nothing that's again, nothing that's changing the game, um, which is it. it while I think some of people want these updates to be game changing updates, um, of course they're adding the, the the new vehicle and the, and the new uh, weapon. But uh, you know, with 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 content and gameplay and such, you know, we'll have to see what happens with it. A um, couple of other things for action and gameplay that they have listed here: uh, players can now put uh, stock attachments on the following weapons: the SKS. Uh, you can put the cheek pad on it, and then the Vector. You can put the tactical stock for the M416 on the Vector now. Uh, so allowing some more of those attachments to you know cross over to different types of of weapons there. Um, there's a is there a new scope here uh, that we need to look at? Can you uh, can you no, narrate so, this? Um, so, all right. So they adjusted the color of the aiming point for the basic crossbow um, scope. So the that is specific to the crossbow. And then what they did for a new scope rendering method. Um, so parallax is like on a website you know how when you scroll down the background maybe will scroll at a different pace than what the content will mm -hmm. um, so they were having an issue with the 4x and I, I think it was just the 4x that the um, barrel was actually aiming at a different place than the um the, the scope was and so you you would be shooting you, you would be seeing that you'd be shooting at one point but the bullet would be going up higher or it'd be going lower. So it wouldn't be matching that, okay, I'm aiming here, the bullet's going to go here. So they fixed that so it didn't have that parallax type of effect uh, because they showed an example, and we'll have a link to it in the show notes, where it had a point where the barrel was actually pointing and then it had you know what you were looking at through the site. And you could see that the barrel was aiming higher than yeah. the actual uh, sights were. So that was the problem where it wasn't as accurate or sometimes you'd have to, you would have had to have shot a little bit higher or lower, depending on where it was at the time um, to be able to, uh, to make the shot. So they, they're fixing that. So this should give you a lot better precision uh, on the scope. And I don't know if this affected, they showed it on the 4X scope. I don't know if it was affecting the uh, 8X or the 12X or anything like that. Um, but hopefully this makes the scopes just that much better. And, and I, I don't know, I, I probably counted that I was missing, you know, just because a bullet drop and not understanding that enough. So it's good to know that, okay, these should be, and they're, they're looking at it. I mean, that's a good thing. You know, they said, hey, it's having this issue, and they showed it very clearly in that tweet, which I really yeah. appreciate because it's not a guessing game of, oh, we fixed the shotgun. Oh, we fixed the <laughs> shotgun. Okay, well, over and what over. was the problem, and what you fix? <laughs> yeah. Um, so a couple of other things real quick. Um, uh, the first thing here is, um, they modified recoil for the following weapons, the AKM, the SCAR, the M16 and the M416. Uh, so the, the, again, that'll be a little bit different if you hop in game and you're wondering, Hey, why aren't my shots hitting? Uh, you know, recoils been adjusted a little bit. So, uh, be aware for that. A uh, fixed issue allowing a player to zoom in with right click when waiting, uh, before throwing a grenade. I, I, I thought you were always allowed to do that. I thought that was just part of the game because um, I, I, I remember yeah. that happening. Um, and then decrease the time to aim down the sight when using the 2X scope. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of experience with the 2X scope. I don't remember aim, I don't remember that ever being an issue. Yeah, the, uh, the thing is, is, is it covers up so much of the screen. That, that, and that's the same reason that you know I don't like certain aim, of their aim dots. Like I like the red dot because it, use, it covers the minimal amount of screen. Um, you know, and the other one actually takes up because of the circle and everything on it. It takes up a lot of screen and they, I run into the same thing with the 2X. So that's the main reason I don't like the 2X is because it's hard to be so precise because it's just a big dot and circle in the middle. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I try yeah. to avoid it, but I guess it was taking too long. The animation was taking too long to 
get to where you're looking down it. Yeah, I think it's got a very specific point in the game for it to be useful. Um, I think if you look at uh, that point with those last final two or three zones, probably the last two, Mm -hmm. uh, when you have a 4X scope uh, and it's just too powerful, but yet you might be shooting across the field. I really like the the placement of the 2X scope. I, I know I know a lot of people don't, but I'm just really, really bad with a 4X scope um, yeah. in, in close quarters. It, it, I'm just really, really bad with it. So I, I, I like it. I'm glad they put it in there. They totally filled that void because I remember many times sitting in a game and at the, you know, towards the end of it, having just to switch my 4X scope to a red dot or maybe even the iron side. So I didn't have an extra red dot to uh, yeah. to deal with that, which which was which was unfortunate. Um, so. Yeah, uh, and I, it'll be interesting to see what they add over time. I mean, I don't know how many more sites they can really add. No, um, probably, probably I mean, not. We're, we're, we're getting to kind of what, unless, well, you know, do you think they'll add maybe uh, night vision? or I mean, it'll be interesting. That's where they could really venture out is having maybe different cycles of time, you know, having a little possibly being more nighttime and then having night vision scopes and things like that. Um, that's the only kind of variation I can really see. Or thermal yeah. scopes, maybe... I mean, they could do some crazy things like that that I can see fitting. Yeah, some thermoscopes probably. But again, you know, and, and I guess that you could say the same thing with all the attachments. They put so much. It's a double edged sword. They put so much in at the beginning. Everybody loved it and said, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Look at all these attachments. Look at all these sites. But now it's like, OK, well, you're, you know, what what are we two months into the game, three months into the game? And it's like, OK, well, most of the attachments are in. Um, and, and, you know, what more can you do on sites? You can, what are you going to add a 40 X scope at one point? It all actually brings up like a range finder attachment because you know how you can adjust, like you can push a button. It'll show you they are 200 meters out or whatever. Yeah. 200 yards. Um, a bipod attachment he's bringing up, you know, so you can lay down with a sniper rifle. Again, I'm not saying they're out of attachments, but I'm sure I'm, there's a handful of things that they, that I could see useful adding into this game over its lifespan. That, that was my point that not that. Oh, there's no other possible they're, attachments. They're not going to have a ton more that they can add beyond that. I mean, they're twenty. What, they can't add twenty more what the attachments. Real world has. Yeah, what, there's yeah. no. What, there's not twenty more attachments for them to throw in the game. There might not even be, uh, you know, seven more attachments for them to throw in the game. Who who knows? It all depends on what would actually be useful. Again, remember, this is not Arma. This is not a military simulator. Um, it wasn't yeah. designed to be that. This is supposed to be something that is, uh, you know, it, it's survival it's serious but it's got some arcadiness to it as well um so you get yeah. to a certain point where you, you know you're literally playing arm again and it's you know that's not what mo- I, I don't think that's what most people are playing it for so um that's that a couple of changes to to the to the vehicles um added puncture wheel effect uh, so you'll actually you actually may know now when your wheels get shot out instead of you just you know veering off the side of the road um this is actually this is one that I saw a couple of times happen on live streams and, and whatnot. When a vehicle explodes, the fences near will actually explode. You'd have a burning vehicle like inside of a hole in a fenced in area and you know, nothing else would be hurt. Um, they added new vegetation to the lobby. Uh, a couple of UI changes as well. Uh, players cannot press delete to remove their uh, marker on the map, which was always an issue. Um, adjusted the transparency of the minimap grid and the coordinates uh, text to make the map more visible. So they they raised the opacity of that mini map that was that's in the uh, bottom right hand corner of the map, I believe. Uh, so you should be able to see that a little bit better. Maybe if you have some glare, you're playing in a bright room that could be hard to see. Uh, added a dotted line towards the next player zone on the mini map, so you can kind of see where you're going with that. Uh, modified the icon design of the first aid kit. Um, some language support, which a whole lot of games are doing. Uh, some some key yeah, bindings. Yeah, they're doing Thai language. So yeah, uh, a couple couple key bindings for some different things. Um, some sound improvements to the motorbike and some doors, and then a whole bunch of bug fixes. Um, I don't know if you want to go into any of those specifically, um, but this is, again, what uh, I... Oh, here's what one I thing I that people may notice is that okay. with the garages, um, they were having 100% spawn rate. People always knew that in a garage there would be a vehicle there. Uh, they said that was not intentional, and so there will be... It's not going to be a guaranteed 100% chance that in every garage there will be a vehicle... Um, it said it'll have a higher rate in a garage than maybe the random ones in the world, but it's not going to be a hundred percent chance. So there may be, gotcha. you know, an opportunity now when you're landing and you're like, oh, I'm going to go check this garage. I'm going to you know, get us a vehicle. It might not be there. So, yeah. so that, that is something to keep in mind. 
I, other than that, I didn't really see any other huge updates. So, I mean, it was just a lot of really good fixes. It's uh, it's funny because I didn't think that was a bug. Um, I just assumed that every garage was supposed to spawn with a vehicle. I think like everybody else. Yeah. Well, you know, I think they do. They do want it to be somewhat random, just like the loot spawns. Uh, but if let's say it's it's in the ninety percent range, that's still a pretty high chance. It may once in a while not be there, which I think is kind of cool for you know, randomness. But I, I think it, it's almost a guarantee. I think they'll have it to the point where it's almost guaranteed that it will be in there. Yeah. Um, so, do we want to move on to Ark? I mean, I can't think of any other uh, battlegrounds. Yeah. News that, I, that's come out. I mean, that's a decent amount. Do you want to do the game giveaway? Or, or. Yeah. Um, let me. Uh, I'll get it pulled up here. If, actually, if you want to start, do you want to go into Ark, or do you want me to do the reading of it? Uh, I can jump into Ark. Let me just get it open here. Because um, they're 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 pretty short. So if you want to go just into the patches themselves, and then we'll talk about the upcoming okay. after the announcement. So we had a couple a couple short updates this week, uh, three of them, and we'll start it off with 257.2. Uh, this was released on May 19th, so that would have been uh, last Friday. The tech replicator is now craftable at the obelisk. That was 257.2, uh, 257.54, May 20th. That would have been Saturday. Uh, fixed a crash involving downloading dinosaurs on unofficial servers. Um, that was 257. About five four and then two fifty seven dot five six. This was on March twenty first. So you know it's it's crazy. They work. They're doing updates every day of the week. They always have done that, and I've always yeah. appreciated that. They don't. You know they don't just their work don't loop doesn't end Thursday linger. afternoon. Exactly. When when there's problems, they just fix it. Um, change the animation data uh, format to use uh, compression. So that could help with a whole bunch of different things. Obviously, with using compression. Uh, and then there's a quick note on here. They say uh, up to date Linux server versions. Uh, with uh, subsequent crash fixes have now uh, has now been posted. So for all you uh, Linux admins out there, uh, I guess that's good for you. Yes. All right. So for the giveaway, um, if you put exclamation point giveaway in chat, and we are going to be doing a giveaway of Super Rude Bear Resurrection. Um, this is a game Favorite. that came out just <laughs> just at the beginning of this month. Um, I'll have a link to the uh, the Steam page if you want to check that out. But this is an indie action, gore, violent, difficult 2D game. So uh, we'll be giving away a copy of that. It's about $15 right now on uh, on Steam. But we will give away a copy of that here in just about 5 or 10 minutes. Cool. All right. Um, so I wanted to go a little bit into... They put some new upcoming things. So that we've been watching the upcoming list. Um, of the patch that's coming in seven days from now, or should be about seven days. And one thing they're adding is toilets. And I'm assuming this is for poop collection, maybe. Um, I'm not sure if maybe it'll give you a larger amount. Maybe they'll be taking out the random every, you know, 10 minute poops that you'll be doing. And, and you have to go to the bathroom every once in a while. Um, but yeah, you will be, um, You'll be able to go into one of your bases and go to the bathroom, and it's a way to, to collect poop. And then another thing they're adding what a is time to be a alive. boat. Yeah. Um, they're going to be adding a motorboat to, and this is actually a, like a gas-powered or something like that motorboat. And I'm assuming, I wonder at what point we'll have a tech-tier boat, because this is something that they seem to always want to do, kind of different levels of each of these items. Um, you have your raft at the moment, uh, which, you know, moves around. Maybe they'll probably nerf that and slow it down a little bit because the raft does seem to be, move pretty fast for a raft. Um, they'll have a motorboat, and I wonder if they'll do some sort of tech-tier advanced thing, uh, you know, like a hovercraft. Yeah, agreement says a tech-tier hovercraft or something like that. Um, but they will be adding a motorboat to, uh, to this, and so that'll be interesting to see. And I'm wondering how much that has to do with physics, maybe testing, because they haven't, don't really have any vehicles like what we would consider vehicles at this point this would be that first kind of a motor propelled and i wonder if this is more of getting the technology in there for some of the mods so that seems to be what they're working with because uh, i'm sure they ran into problems when they were doing like that space the moon one 
um, you know, how do you put a vehicle in there that when the physics aren't really there. So, um, and then another thing they're adding is the greater achievement set. So this is going to be have various cosmetics, hairstyles, and emotes that can be unlocked from achievements inside of the game. So it kind of gives you a reason to run around, uh, you know, in chat, like Greenman's bringing up another thing like a submarine. Um, they did say that they've really backed off the water just because of the issues that they had with trying to be as in depth, no, no pun intended in the water. Um, you know, dealing with just making the bases and everything as expansive as they really wanted in the underwater bases. So I don't know how far they're really going to go with anything underwater, uh, but we'll have to see. I um, I think that that may be something that after they release, they may continue to kind of work on that and improve, and maybe we'll we'll someday see, uh, you know, as 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 a uh, in depth version of of the water as we do you know on land as far as bases and and uh, it, you know they I, I always figured they go a little bit farther but we'll see and they may they may still go there so we will uh, we will find out so I think that that's pretty much it for Arc we'll have to see in one week uh, they should be doing the new patch and this will be what what we kind of were told is the last major content patch of Arc. Um, I'm hoping that maybe we'll get a little bit of an update at that point of, you know, when are they going to be going to uh, out of alpha, out of beta or whatever. Right? I think they're skipping beta altogether. When are they going to be releasing officially? Um, and, you know, maybe a little bit more news on that because they haven't really said and they, and they weren't able to say on the show, uh, you know, any kind of specifics of when are we going to be coming out of alpha. Uh, but I'm hoping after they do their last content, maybe they'll be comfortable enough to be able to say, hey, we'll be releasing, you know, in one month or two months or maybe even three months. Three man guesses December. Which seems we like did a long, guess. It's, it's long ways away. Isn't it in your book? Oh, no, that's H1Z1. Yeah. Hmm. Um, no, I think we I think we did. Um, we have our guesses. I think for H1Z1, not for ARC. For, um, yeah, that was that was H1Z1 guesses. So do, do you want to put in a guess for when ARC is going to be? What if what did they yeah, say? What if, what has been their public stance? They said not until they they're not making a public stance because they don't want to be held to something if they don't feel it's ready. Yes, I see. I don't. I don't know. I mean, what what do you? I'm just. I can just blurt out a month, but I mean, I, I feel like they're going to be real. I, I think I think that they're going to be ready in a month to two months. I think they'll be ready, but I don't know if they're looking uh, at marketing reasons like Greenman saying. You know, do you want to wait until closer to November so that you get a ton of those Christmas sales? Absolutely. Like, you know, absolutely. That's the kind of thing that they're looking at. They may be ready to go, but they may push it off to encourage people to, you know, let's with some of that Christmas money or you know whatever money that we're anticipating for for Christmas podcasting money. Yeah. Are, are we going to hold it off and wait for to get the max sales? Because really, how many more sales are they going to get? I mean, they've got four point whatever million. And they they got they have to be pushing for console. Let, well, again, that that that's that's exactly what I was just going to say. You've got to remember, people, PC gamers, for some reason, fail to understand this. You don't understand yeah, how important <laughs> in disc sales in Walmart's, Targets, GameStops, how important those are. You don't you can't even yeah. comprehend how important those are for games. And if Ark is going to be sold on a disc. And it's going to be in your local Walmart, Target, GameStop, whatever. That is going to, they are going to have an unbelievable amount of sales like that. Because people walk into the store, kids walk in with their grandparents or their aunt, their uncle, and they, and they you know, hey, we're going to buy a video game. It, that's, that's what happens. So if yep. they do a real big, now again, you look at a game like Minecraft that obviously has console ports. I don't think you can buy the story mode on disc. But you can't, um, I don't believe you can buy the regular, you were never able to buy Minecraft on a disc for the Xbox or PlayStation. You had to buy the credits on Xbox Live or on the PlayStation uh, market and then redeem those for the for the game. If they go disc with this, yeah. um, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be absolutely crazy. Yep. And so, uh, yeah, and so that'd be the only reason I think that they would possibly wait till October or November. I, I don't yeah. think that logistically they really need to. Um, you know, I would really have to dig into their patch notes for the console version and see how much they're lagging. That's that's part of the issue is we look at every week 
the PC patch notes. They have a separate Xbox and a separate, separate PlayStation set of patch notes that they may be lagging behind. It may mm -hmm. not be closer, and this may be why they're not announcing it. We look and say, hey, okay, we think all the content's done for PC, but they may not have all the content into the console version that they would want to release on, you know, when it comes out of alpha. So they, it may be to where that's a couple months lagged. And so they're thinking, okay, in November, we'll have all the console things matching what our PC version is at. I mean, that's, I'd really have to give you a really educated guess. That's what I'd have to look at. And that's what I'm guessing is the reasoning for them not wanting to be tied to, all right, we're ready. The PC version's done. Let's release next month because then they they won't be able to say that their console version is also releasing and ready to come out of alpha. So, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm guessing, I mean, my my non like digging into a guess would be November just because of console. Oh, thing. I think Octo you just October. Said, no, you just said like you believe you thought you said it was like a month or two out. I, I think that the PC version is ready in, in oh, a okay. month gotcha. to max two months being done. But I think they're not going to actually officially come out until <laughs> they feel that the console version is ready to go. So. I would recommend you write that in the book. And I'm Brian. I'm going to go crazy with this. Are you ready? Okay. I'm going to say, I'm going to say early 2018. I break the year up into a couple different parts. So early <laughs> would be January, February, February March, March, April, May, oh. April, May, Bob, yeah. April, May, June. So I would say early, You'd say first early or first quarter. No, no, no. I'm going to say early, early. 27 so that you can smidge what early means <laughs> exactly early 2018 don't say first some, quarter because that ties you only to three months possible exactly early and i, I mean I, the way i break it up i say january February, march may june july you know i, I break me, it up early is the first half a year no no seriously right, so, no i don't I, I don't think i could make an accurate i don't think i could even throw out a prediction there's there's been no indication I put in quotes early 2018 all. I'd, I'd be right in quotes <laughs> sometime between January and June. Yes, exactly. So perfect. Uh, um, yeah. So, you know, well, and right, here's I'm the other question late too. October. Okay. Um, it, Here, dash November. And, and this is kind of what you just talked about, Brian, but I, I just want to reiterate on it. Do they are, and will they, and are they willing to let the PC version sit in a holding pattern for the console versions to get caught up if that's necessary. Well, this is this is case in point what happened with Friday the 13th. They refused yep. to let the PC version and I guess it's, it's different. Friday the 13th wasn't out on PC so it was a different story. Ark's already out but will they say wait an extra four, five, six months to make this game go gold before they decide uh, you know, before the, I think, um, I think they're kind of holding on to a lot of content that we're not seeing for that official launch. I, I think a lot of the story elements and, and the progression and like all that stuff is locked down until, until it's actually released. But yes, I, yeah. I think if they're, I think if, if they're smart and not that it's the thing that PC people want to hear, but if they're smart, they're going to do it all at once so that when when I say, oh, man, you know, this new content for uh, for ARC is just awesome. Like, I'm having a great time. And I go tell my friend that. And most likely my friend's not going to be playing on PC like I am because of the percentage wise. Yeah. There's more people playing consoles. He can go to the Xbox store. He can go to the PlayStation store and say, oh, OK, I'm going to go check that out. Oh, oh and what if he goes there? Oh, I don't see that. I can't get the same ARC content that he has. It's still an alpha here. Um, I'm not going to buy it. Yeah. You know, they want to avoid that situation. Exactly. And, it, and so I, I think that they, that'd be the only reason to do it. And it, I think marketing wise, when the no, when they're looking at the numbers that they're looking at, that's what you have to do. And Exactly. And that's what I think what people have to understand. If people put too much emotion into this, right? They make it, oh, well, yeah. you know, uh, we beta tested it first or we alpha tested it first. So we should get it first. It, folks, it's a business. It's all about PR. It's about sales. It's about how does our game look to the public. So they're, if, yep. if they need to spend an extra six months before that they're ready to uh, release it on all the platforms at the same time, they're going, they're going to wait the extra six months because that's how businesses yep. operate. That's how that's how this stuff works. So 
you can be upset about it, but that's just the way it is. And if you think otherwise, I, 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 you, I don't think you have enough experience to say that because it's just, it, it's just the, all, everything is like that. Everything ever has been yeah. like that. So there you yeah. go. I mean, the, yeah, that's the thing is we got, we have to realize that we are not the main market for a lot of these. Oh. Once you get to this level, we are a small, well, and, small part of the market. And, and, and you've got to look at Brian, the amount of sales on consoles versus the amount of sales on PC. It doesn't even come close. We're talking millions yeah. and millions of more sales on 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 consoles than on, they're not even it's not even close. You look at that market share and it's 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 an absolute joke. Yep. So people need so, to remember. Yeah, that. we'll find out. I mean, up. this this will be something that we'll just have to see what that what else they're gonna do. I, I mean, I don't I don't know once we once they have the next patch note that says once they release this one. Yeah. We'll see if they have another version that's after this of because they always have put, you know, here's what we're expecting next patch and then putting a guess for the date. What are they going to do after this? Are they still going to have some of those and it's going to have some of the more random things or are they just going to be done with those version numbers until they actually release? I mean, I, I don't know. And that'll be an interesting thing to see here in the next week and a half once that releases and then, you know, what's coming up on the on that patch website. Well, we'll keep an eye on it. Hopefully, we'll see next week. I mean, if they have more in there, it, it might be, you know, we're working on direct text. It might be longer out. It might just pretty much be that longer out. Eventually, we're going to work on the, we're going to try to get that direct text 12 compatibility. We're going to try to get this, you know, whatever it is. Um, yeah. I don't know. We'll find out because I don't, I don't have a guess. I mean, ARC is, is a group that it's really hard to, they're so consistent. It's really hard to guess when something changes what they might do. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. All right. So, do you want to go ahead and uh, and roll for this uh, this game giveaway? Sure. Cool. All right. So the winner is Firebomb eighty. Congratulations. I will send you a message that will uh, that will have the uh, a link that you can use to redeem that, and you'll be able to uh, find that in your other messages because I send it from my personal account, not from the infection account, and so it. Usually people don't, I don't stream on my personal account, so they don't follow it. So it goes to the other messages. Yes. So we will, uh, um, yeah. so we'll, you can, you'll see that in the next five minutes or so. Yep. Uh, now we did have uh, a Conan Exiles hotfix. Uh, this was released on the 18th of last week. That would have been last Thursday. Um, and this is just, uh, just a normal hotfix. Uh, the first thing in here is they disabled some console commands that could crash the server. Obviously, that was probably the reason that they did the hotfix. Uh, you know, people could throw in some commands and it would crash the server. Um, this is more of a fix than anything else. The wooden bowl requires wood now instead of stone, uh, as it is a wooden bowl, not uh, a bowl, sense. not a. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, you can now sit on the wooden bench, uh, placeable object, uh, which is cool. We, we again, we saw those pictures when. Conan was uh, about to come out of you know the the room that was all done. There was you know stuff on the floor, stuff hanging on the wall. People were sitting in chairs and stuff. None of that's really in the game yet. Um, so this is kind of the first step in that right direction of doing this. I don't know why they even called this a hotfix to be honest with you, because there's content. I mean th- th- that sitting on the wooden bench is not is not a hotfix. Um, yeah. A couple of other things with some emotes, um, but you know I, I don't. Why call it a hotfix? That stuff really bugs me. I th- when I think of hotfix, I think, I think I think you fix one thing. It was game breaking, and that's it. Do your hotfix, and then do a content update the next day or three hours later. Just doesn't seem. It seems with it's them stupid. I think it's their just the way that they word it. Because um, if it's not an actual content patch, they do everything else as a hotfix. Is how it really they word it, which doesn't make any sense to me. Just put um, update or it's I an don't update. Know. It's not a it's not a hotfix. Yeah. Yeah, hotfix is usually a last minute. Like we found a bug because of our last patch, and I I kind of think of a hotfix as a more negative thing. It's usually something you missed or messed up on on the actual release, not just a normal hot, patch. Hot, hotfix is something is broken; it needs to be fixed immediately. That's a hotfix, not sitting on wooden benches. Yeah. Now, agree. I think sitting on the wooden wooden benches is great, and and fi- them fixing the the wooden bolt to be using wood instead of stone. Those are great updates, but they're not hotfix updates. It's a different thing. Yeah. Yep. So we'll we'll see. I mean, how how this is so this is the only update. Do you think have they gotten back to? It seems like they've been gotten back to maybe one update a week. Because last yeah. week we had the update twenty six. 
Um, and then we have this hot fix. Um, I, th I wonder if that's kind of where they're settling out to is doing doing one patch per week. I, I don't know. They, I mean, I'm trying, I've been trying help. to figure out their schedule. Yeah. Uh, and like with this, what? Oh, it'll be interesting to see too, like what their next uh, content patch is, because that they, I think they have a little ways to go before this is a really playable game. Like, for instance, an Ark would be, or even Seven Days to Die. Um, there's just not the end game yet in this, and I'm, I'm curious to see if they're working on some more advanced dungeons or you know something that you can do after you've built your base because that's that's always the tough thing with certain games is like what do you do once you've built your base um you know is this are they wanting this to be, to be pvp if so they have to start kind of pushing it that way um or do they want this to be like arc is not necessarily a pvp game no you know it exactly. can be but yeah. it's not necessarily a pvp game like i i think that the, that conan is really aiming more for a pvp type of a game so but the thing green is, is man, it right doesn't play as a pvp game at the moment yeah green man makes a great point he says uh conan is not in a good place where's the content and all i can do is echo that i mean yeah. th there is the there's no content it's yeah i don't think brian i don't think in in, in games that we've ever talked about on this show I have ever seen a game that has had such a steep drop off so quick. I mean, yeah. this game went from uh, th this game went from selling so many copies that it saved the company from going bankrupt for all intents and purposes to literally a thousand people playing it at a time. Yeah. Well, that's that's a, that's the thing though is I think they didn't have enough con. I mean, they had a playable game when they released, but playable yeah. for what? I mean, what are you trying to do? Like what exactly after we have a people that will play the death out of a game yep. and, and they were running out of things to do once they made their base. So absolutely. I just think uh, I, that's the thing is I just think that they really need to, to figure out like where are we, if we're going to aim on if we're trying to make this a PVP game, like focus in on that PVP aspect. Um, mm -hmm. But I haven't seen a ton of PVP other than making things that destroy each other's bases, I've seen things that really go for PvP. If they're not, then they need to come up with some of that more MMO type of content of stuff just to fill your time after you've built your base and you've reached a high level. Because there's just that's where it ends. Um, you run out of stuff to do once you built your base and you've gotten to a higher level. Like, what are you gonna do? Run around and just gather more stuff for fun? I mean, you need that extra stuff to do. And yeah. Ark, Ark has that. Like they constantly the have the time sinks, right? something that's more. That's difficult. what it is. Yeah, yeah. Those time sinks. I mean, I, I always pushed on those time sinks, and I think that that's yeah. some of the most important part for a video game like this. You have to have those time sinks, and I think that they just don't have them yet. And I don't know exactly what those are going to be, but when we look at Ark, Ark has incredible time sinks. Feeding your damn animal, like, man. That's going. <laughs> yeah, but but even now with with the tech tier, all that stuff requires a huge commitment of time and yep. uh and it's very difficult this doesn't have any of those and so they need to start figuring out what those are yeah it's um so. it's in really rough shape i mean there's no easy way to put it i mean i i, I really thought the game i thought the game was going to be fantastic when it came out it was a good game when it came out um but it's just not it just has not stood up um you know, all the hype around it has just completely died out. And again, I say this, I've said it a thousand times, Brian, I don't like complaining about something unless I can have, unless I have a solution. I do not have the solution for Ark, or excuse me, for Conan. I don't know what they can do. You could say add more yeah. content, but that's not, that's not a real solution. I mean, of course they're going to add more content. I don't know what they can do. It, it, I can't, I don't know where they're going to be six months from now. That's the thing yeah. is I, I look at it as where are they going to be in six months? In, if they put it put it into gear, they they may have if they have to really focus on content for six months to be able to then say, OK, we're in a good spot. But if they take it really slow, even in six months, I don't think they'll have a huge amount of content at this pace. And According I, to I don't, Steam they may be, Spy. But things they may be working on stuff in the background that we don't know about. According to Steam Spy, they have over half a million sales. And there's a thousand people yep. playing the game. 
Yeah. And it, it didn't release that long ago. No, and then that's the problem. Ago? Less? Uh, four months ago. Four months ago, yeah. I believe. Um, and yeah, so just that's the thing is, just I almost would rather have them waited and had some more of that content in there. I mean, I understand you want to have the hype and, you know, that's cool. But they almost should have I, waited um, and, and put uh, some of those time sinks in there. I would have imagined, Brian, if, if any of those stories that were released a couple of weeks ago are any accurate, I bet you the company was out of money um, and, and they, they had, had to release. To release. Uh, I, mean, I mean, again, I have no inside knowledge. We've had Jens Eric on the show. We, we, we had him. We interviewed him at PAX. I have no inside knowledge. Here. I don't think Brian does either. We, that, there was an article out that Conan Exiles single handedly saved the company. Um, so obviously they were in a bad enough financial situation that um you know that they needed this game to save it they, this may have been the uh you know, the shining the spitting example of a company you know kind of pushing a game release for reasons uh monetarily so again there's yeah. no way to know but I, I think that could be a valid uh valid reason yep and uh, we'll see i mean that's, that's the thing is they may be working on some content in the background that they want to be a surprise that can make a huge difference. But when you don't know, I mean, when there's no evidence of it, you can't really say, oh, I'm sure there's something coming. <laughs> you know, well, there might not be. Yeah. Um, but it, we may be surprised. I'm not going to make a prediction one way or the other. Like, yeah. I don't know. Um, but I think it would be really cool if they did, if all of a sudden they're like, hey, we have this whole new kind of like an expansion to this. Here's some really cool content to pull you back in and give you something to do. Uh, but I think that's what it would take to bring enough numbers back. I think they, if they piecemeal it out and have it be a really slow release, that they're going to have a tough time bringing a lot of those numbers back. And Firebomb um, says, I really want to like Conan maybe soon. I think a lot of people, myself included, maybe you, Brian, are in that exact same situation. The game, mm -hmm. this looked like a really cool kick-ass game when it came out. It was like, oh man, this looks a lot like Ark. It's got a lot of similar elements. Cool, another game. Uh, but it just has yep. not not been able to stand up and and hold the player base i mean four months into the game there's 1600 people playing it right now that is not that's not good no and we'll see i mean if it, time will tell with this game and i i don't have and that's the thing is i have no clue which way they're going to take it it's going to be totally up to the dev company or you know the dev team where they take this i mean the ball is 100 percent in their court they can either totally drop the ball and it'll fade away or, you know, they, if they're pushing hard and really making like working on things in the background, they could have something really cool. And I just, we'll, we'll find out. I mean, I, I, I don't, I don't know how long it's going to take them to do it, but I think in six months we'll have a much better idea of whether the game is going to fail or, or if it's going anywhere based on what they start to release. Because right now there's just not enough content in there to really say it's going to go one way or the other for me. Yeah. Um, all all right. right. So, um, do we want to go into Rust? Um, you want to do miscreated or Rust? Um, we no. Oh, sorry. Yeah, we skipped it. Okay. Yeah. Let's go and do. Uh, let's go and do miscreated. They released sure you're update number forty nine. Hmm. So I'm sure you're excited for this one. You're always. You're always yeah. Loving so this. This is update forty nine. So they they usually do bigger patches. Uh, this was released on the seventeenth. And one thing they added was a new torpidity and unconsciousness system. So you're able to knock people out uh, and, you know, maybe that way you can knock them out, take their loot, and uh, you don't have to totally kill somebody, kind of taking away that reason to kill somebody um, and maybe add more to the RP elements of the game. Uh, another thing is whitelisted servers can now remain online up to 24 hours without restart. So a very busy server still recommends that you restart every 12 hours. So they don't recommend that you just have servers running. They have a restart for the server to kind of clear everything out. Um, campfire will now turn off when wood is removed from it. Um, camps fires won't use up lumber after being extinguished. So um, it won't continue to, to take whatever you've left in there. Uh, balance the damage amounts of and sound radius on almost all the weapons, which is a pretty big thing. Uh, you know, it sounds generic, but they've been trying to really balance the weapons. Added torpidity handling to consumables and medical item items. So maybe um, you're knocked out, 
or you know, and or you have a level of con- unconsciousness, you can uh, kind of revive somebody and bring them out of that. Fixed issue with last rounds not being fired or heard for remote clients. Fixed for, for ladders to help prevent players from becoming invisible um, when using them. And then magazine and ammo piles cannot be unloaded or split while in a weapon. Uh, fixed several item spawn locations to reduce floating items when spawned in. Fixed fix for invisible invisible player issue. Fixes for another player is too close issues. So if you try to go loot somebody um, and someone was standing next to you, you could not loot those things. Added ability to loot corpses while swimming. Rock, sticks, and mushrooms can now be found around the world on the ground. Um, adjusted spawn rates of different ammunition types. Increased chance for weapon attachments to spawn. Fixed performance issues with more detailed logging levels enabled. And then you can now loot all items from a bound player or incapacitated incapacitated player um they added a craftable solar power power generator generator so you can put a solar power solar panel up on your uh, base and be able to generate power for that added craftable arrow types um, crafted sandbags will be dropped on the ground if the player's inventory is full they added wolf pelt rugs for base building they added a stone hammer hatchet and pickaxe and then they added some items they added a tranquilizer gun and darts Shotgun beanbag rounds, and that's probably for knocking people out. These are all things for knocking people out. Um, sleep, tear, and nerve grenade, or tear, sorry. Sleep, tear, and nerve grenade, grenades are added to the game now. Solar panel crafting parts have been added. Added some stone weapons. Fixed for some consumables, not playing um, emotes and sounds. Eating a rotten apple now causes a negative effect. Crossbows and bows are always spawned with arrows. They added a red headlamp. And then they added an adrenaline syringe. Um, as far as vehicles, they changed base implementa- implementation of the five-ton truck. It now has better physics, suspension, rolling, tire slipping behaviors, and can climb steeper slopes. Um, on the map, they added an expansive sewer system. And I've seen them working on this. They've been streaming a little bit of this, of this on Twitch um, to Hayward Valley. So you can go in there and go loot and move around in the sewer system. They added some new extra detail and some expansion east of Hayward Valley. And then they had an attempt to block quad bikes from going up the stairs in the hotel building. So they've added things to uh, try to stop people from taking the quad bikes up into the hotel. And then they uh, did some adjustments to the UI. Um, they adjusted uh, the rocks thrown by AI no longer caused increased damage due to headshots. Um, they added fixes to the audio, to the base building um, system, animations. They've been working a lot on those. And then uh, they talk about the torpidity and unconsciousness system. Um, it, the unconsciousness lasts for 30 seconds. 10 of those are a full blackout and the rest is a recovery period. Um, the unconscious effect can be extended by applying more torpidity to the knocked out player or uh, made shorter by making him smell salts. Aspirin and energy drinks help counteract existing torpidity when consumed. Salt can be used to wake someone up just enough for them to stand. An adrenaline syringe can now be used by instantly to instantly wake someone um, and remove all visual effects. Uh, you can use the voice, voice over IP system while unconscious, though. And then unconscious players can be incapacitated with duct tape and other binding items. So you can pretty much tie them up to allow you to continue to uh, rob them. So um, th- so to become unconscious, you can either drink too much alcohol, bad food, or um, like rubbing alcohol will knock someone out immediately. Being shot with tranquilizer darts, um, sleep gas grenade, beanbag shotgun shells, having less than four health and bleeding, and then flashbang grenades. Um, have the possibility of knocking you unconscious. So, um, some weapons also would cause torpidity, but will kill before sending you unconscious. And that's poisoned arrows and bolts, shotgun shells, thrown stones, and explosions. So, here you go. That is pretty much patch 49. And then they had a 49A, which was just a lot of fixes, um, a hot fix that they had done that just fixed some of the issues from patch 49 that was done on the 22nd. So, that was yesterday. That pretty cool, much yeah. brings us current with miscreated. Yeah. Um, let's see here. There's a, there was a train going by. It was quite loud, and I had to had, had, oh, had nice. to mute myself. Yeah. Uh, that could that could be quite a problem here. Um, so for the, st- uh, <laughs> for the station. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. I was saying that could be that could be quite a problem, uh, depending on how many times that train goes through. Uh, we do have some quick H1Z1 news uh, for King of the Kill. There was a uh, hot fix on 522. Um, now they they say this was a hot fix, um, and additional changes have been made to further improve frame rate for players that saw a decrease in FPS after last week's game update. That's a hot fix. That is yeah. this something happened bad last week. We are fixing it this week. That is a hot fix. That's the literal definition of a hot fix. Based on players' feedback and the ability to toggle shadows on and off has been uh, added into the uh, in-game options menu. However, as with other gameplay rules, uh, we may enforce shadows to be turned on or off for some game modes events in the future. So they're protecting them now. They're protecting themselves so that they don't have to uh, later explain to somebody why they can't turn uh, shadows or, or whatnot off. Now, you have a clip in here, Brian. Um from yeah, so this you, is from me playing. I was streaming some King of the Kill this past week. Okay. And I just wanted to show the current state of the shotgun. All so, right. so you can talk you over don't have to this. play any audio on this. Yeah. Um. So this is, uh, this is me pretty much running in. Somebody, I shoot him once, shoot him twice with a shotgun right in the chest. The first time hits the body armor, which I understand. The second time hits directly in the chest with the shotgun from pretty close range. And they don't die. It only takes 30% of their health. This is so two point blank shots with a shotgun. And and see how he's doing that stupid crouch thing? Like, yep. I always wonder what that does for the game. Like, is that is there a reason that they're doing that? Does Couldn't it tell you, cause bro. shots not to hit? Like, I'm just wondering if that... I see a lot of these players constantly just crouching. Like up and down, um, up and down, up and down. It could be a nervous thing. Uh, that's a big thing from Counter Strike. It's a lot of people just do it nervously. They just, you know, they're always. I just always wonder. Like you saw that. That was point blank. It was no. It was point blank. I'm not. I'm not saying. Um, I'm not saying that. That. I. I, just, there, there, I can't. There I may just, be. I think an they issue. really need to. Yeah, I think they really need to slow down, like the crouching, like make it so that you can't do it so much. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know myself when I'm kind of just running straight, I'm always pressing A and D and going side to side. It's just a nervous thing when when I understand that like he's playing. actually pressing crouch constantly up, but, down, up, but down, that's up, what down. I'm saying. I mean, I have those kind of like nervous things when I play some of these games, especially if this guy has played any competitive games in the past, like like Counter-Strike. There's a lot of that stuff in Counter-Strike bunny hopping constantly. Yeah. Um, so, again, now. In H1Z1, that's why I said it may be a problem. There very well may be a... It might um, be that you can't do damage in like the middle of a transition or something. Very possible. I mean, knowing H1Z1, that's very, very possible. Absolutely. I, I'm saying, but on the other hand of this, it may also just be somebody that's been playing video games, uh, maybe some more competitive ones for a while, and that's just their nervous tick or twitch is to always, you know, control up and down. Um, so... Yeah, I, I, think, I think they should do it to where there is... A cool down or that you know there's a limited because you saw him he was just up down up down up down up down ph is saying and if you don't it locks you uh, he, is he talking about csgo he's saying oh, in csgo okay. that that locks oh, you now sorry i'm not but that's the thing is i think they really need to to look at something like that and first and that and that may not be the explanation of why that happened but i just wanted to show like both of those shots and i and, yeah. and, you know playing the audio i listened the first one i heard the the plunk of the of the body armor the second one hit hit body and it showed markers both times so you can't say that it yeah. missed like both hit dead on and it had like the shotgun has kick they get it hit and the kick moved it to the right um but when i shot when i shot like they both hit dead on and so it's just frustrating to me it's like absolutely if you if the shotgun isn't for made for that close like what's the point of the shotgun that was just that you shouldn't be trying to shoot an ar and ak and that's what he was doing from that close i mean i had a shotgun two point blank shots what else can i do yeah so, i don't know what to tell you brian they've been telling us fixed 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 i've yet to yeah. see it i and i just wanted to show that it, i don't think it's still fixed i mean i don't know how much longer we'll go with the shotgun being the way it is, I mean, I 
I thought it was fixed based on what they were claiming with oh the the spread and all this stuff. I figured it was fixed, so I started using it again, and that's what happens. And so I, it, I would think that with a shotgun with no body armor from that close of range, should be a, a one shot kill. I mean, hmm. I, I I I mean I don't know if that's intended. That it, they're like oh no no you need to do, you know you have to have a certain amount of pellets blah blah blah. But that close with when the shot went off, it was in the center of his chest. It should be a one shot kill. And if it's not, then they need to explain how it really should work, how it works. Because <laughs> they haven't explained how it works. No. Well, 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 they did kind of explain how the shotgun works. Um, they said it's no, 12. They said it's 12 pellets now, but that was point blank in the center. Like how big of a spread did the shotgun have? Oh, yeah. Oh, well, valid. Yeah. I mean, if it, if, if, if half of them went to the right of them and it comes so close to half went to the right and half went to the left, that's not a good design choice. Yeah. Like if that close, the bullet spread should not be wide enough yet. He should have all 12 shots in his chest. Hmm. That, I mean, that's just my opinion. Um, I, um, I don't know. I just, I give I, up, I give up on the shotgun. I would say at this point in time, um, I don't see any reasonable. Uh, I don't. I don't see any change. Any. I don't see the shotgun ever working right uh, for the foreseeable future. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. There's no indication of it. They just need. They should pull it out. I mean, it that's how they fixed everything else. Random. Oh, vehicles. Vehicles are blowing up randomly. Oh, we fixed it. We got rid of all the vehicles. Problem solved. But yeah, the shotgun's a different gun than the rest of their guns. That if they can't figure it out, take it out. Because it shouldn't be, oh, it happened to work this time. Oh, it didn't work that time. Like when I play and I want to, you know, I want I want it to be because I want, I want to have lost either because the other person was better than me or I didn't play well enough. Not because of some random thing that happened in the game, which this game has a lot of random randomness that happens, which drives me insane. And Hanny brings up, they can't remove an item because it has skins. Just like they'll never remove the 380 ah. because it has a skin for it. This is true. This is true. You didn't even think about that. Um, and so they're stuck with it now. <laughs> yeah. Well, then they need to fix it. You know? Uh, they tried. Say they the literally has one slug. Make, they need this, to make it a slug shotgun. Have one bullet that comes out right down the middle. Yeah, well, yeah, well, the problem is then people would actually have to aim it. You just wouldn't be able to you know, shoot it all over the place and expect something to happen. Um, I mean, they literally just rewrote it. So I don't know... I, Shit, man. I don't. I don't know. What, what, what more are they gonna do? They literally just changed how the entire thing works, and it still doesn't. So, yeah. Who knows? Well, who that cares? was this past week. I mean, so it's over. That is the current. I mean, that that clip is the current state of the shotgun. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I really. There's nothing to say. What is there to say? Yeah. They literally just redid I just it. To, still, I just wanted oh. to br bring it to the attention to show. Now I'm that pissed it still off. Still is an oh, issue. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that, that's your happy king of the kill news. Yeah, great. Wonderful. Um, Ruining my vacation. So, one thing, one game that I played um, this yeah. past week, because I did kickstart it, but was the Island of... Is Island of Nine? Make sure I... Asking, like, you played it. <laughs> it's the Islands of... Well, I want to get the full name. It's Islands of Nine Battle Royale. And the issue is, is to play it in this pre-alpha test, I had... I had to agree to an NDA, so I can't Ooh. talk about the specifics of the Island of Nine, but I guess I'll just give some general, like, general what's the feedback, game? not without giving giving away what, any what's details. The game? What's the game first? What, what What is this game? What is it? Is it Battle Player on Battlegrounds? What is this thing? So it's an online competitive first person shooter inspired by works such as Battle Royale and the Hunger Games. It's 100 players per match. This is off their website, so these are things that I can say. 100 players per match with a, um, three ever shrinking arenas. So there are three different arenas that um, I think in the test there was only one, if I remember correctly, but they'll have three. Um, you drop in, find a weapon, and stay alive. Um, you know, and it's a fight down to the, to the you know, last player. They'll have multiple game modes, so not everyone's a lone wolf. Team up as a, with a friend in double mode or queue up as a five-man team. Um, three large-scale maps. Um, Skill-based rewards, so rare armor sets, weapon skins, game currency, and 
more depending on how long you can outlast the competition. And then, uh, yeah. And one thing I'm trying to think of what I can say, um, they, they will have a player betting system or so you can uh, bet on individual players or teams. And then you can spend those winnings on the new armor pieces or weapon skins at the in-game store. Uh, one thing I will say is that the lobby area, and I think I can get away from this. Um, it, the, the lobby area was one of the most fun parts of the game. I'm not going to cool. say why. I'm not going to say anything else other than I had some of the most fun in the lobby um, than, the, you know, out of the whole game. So that'll be cool. I'll see, the I'll see when I can. The no, the game, the game was fun as well. <laughs> but the, lo the lobby was the lobby was really cool. So uh, but we'll, I'll, I'll look at the NDA and see if there's at what point that will be released or when uh, I can play every weekend. Um, so right now that the tests are open each weekend, so I'll be able to play again this weekend. But I will uh, I'll take a look and see how long the NDA will be in effect. And so, um, yeah, so we'll see at what point I might be able to stream it on our channel or at least show some, show some, some uh, clips of what the game nice. was like. Because it, it was fun, but I just, with the NDA, I can't, I can't, couldn't record anything. I couldn't take any screenshots. I can't I mean, you tell could. you about specific, I, I could, but I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So. Hey, we're a big successful podcast. We, we get around the rules. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they'll just be like, oh, yeah, you guys talked about it. That's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is this is a game that I kickstarted probably six months plus ago, maybe almost a year ago. Uh, now, there were a lot of people in there that have been in the private tests that were playing that have been playing it for months. Um, and mm -hmm. so they just opened it up to this tier of the Kickstarter being able to, to play it now. So if you kickstarted that game, you may want to check your emails because you may have a code that you can redeem on steam and, and play on these weekend tests. Cool. So we're good. So anyways, yeah, that's something to look forward to. Uh, but, I, but I can say, uh, you know, they're, they are doing a very good job, uh, for what they've done so far. There weren't any really obvious bugs. There weren't any major problems. Um, and so that is a really good sign that I, it seems like they're actually putting in their, their time and doing the game. Right. So, we will go into it more later. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, you got one, we got one more game you want to go into and then we can do a tip of the week. Yeah. Do you want to do, um, whatever you, you want, well, whatever. we can do either unturned black death. Unturned. It's up to you. Oh, uh, let's do the black death. Unturned. I, I looked at the unturned update really quick. A lot of it was stuff for, um, they're, they're working on helping, uh, modders and developers and stuff do stuff. They added a couple yeah, hot And they're working on some stuff with a new map, but there wasn't anything yeah. specific. It's all in preparation for that. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's so, been, it's been the trend so, for the past couple of months has been them. Uh, has been, actually, I should say them. I should say him, uh, Nelson working on giving, uh, modders access to almost every tool available, um, to make cool stuff inside the game. Yep. Um, so it, let, yeah, so the Black Death, this is something where they've been releasing. I mean, there was a long period of time where they didn't release anything. Um, that mm -hmm. was the time when I said, you know, don't touch this game. Uh, but it, they've been pretty consistently now releasing updates over the last few months. Uh, this one was on the 19th. They do the European date system. So it's 19 5 2017. Uh, and so they talked about some known issues that they're working on at the moment. They fixed a known server stability server st stability issue, um, unlocking the peasants for players stuck at uh, fully skilled beggars. So because you cause you progress from beggar to peasant, um, they had people that could never get to the next level. So they fixed that. And they are ongoing work with our server host, hosts multiplay to maintain saves. So for some reason it wasn't saving. And these are all servers that are run on their on their hardware. So They've been working on animations, trying to get the uh, the melee like combat. Because it's one thing that they that doesn't isn't smooth, uh, 100 percent all you know all the time, and so they're really working on the animations of of how you swing swords and things like that in the game uh, to make the the combat system a little bit a bit better. Uh, another thing they've been working on is the crowd AI, animal and animal AI. So they show a, a clip here uh, of 
him walking behind, I think it's a bunch of pigs and just the, the pigs running away from him in a herd. Uh, and also if maybe if you pull out a weapon and kind of are chasing a, a group of people, how they'll kind of group up and run away. Um, they're showing some of the, the new content that they're going to be releasing with some of the new swords and with fancy hilts and things like that. Um, some new castles that they're adding. Uh, they're a bit, really good job of, of fixing the AI or the UI. The UI looks much better. They've been doing because that's one thing that's for a lot of games is really tough. Um, they've really put in some work. They must have gotten gotten a, a pretty good uh, UI guy because they've been doing a really good job of making the game much prettier, um, much more usable in, inside. And then they've added a, a Steam guide for housing, and then they've added a Steam guide, uh, you know, using the wiki that you can go through just to kind of give you a heads up of how to play the game. So that's pretty much uh, the Black Death for the main uh, post they did. That, And then they also did a hot fix after that, which mostly was just fixing uh, some of the bugs from that update, uh, you know, stabilizing server-side profession unlocking, um, AI doesn't fly away anymore when collided with. Just a lot of fixes like that. So they are, and this was on the 16th. Um, so that first one, I think, was put out on the uh, 19th. So, yeah, so this was the hot fix they did. And then this update was, the, the one that I read first, was things that they were still working on and what to expect in the next patch. So this game, I think, is at a point now, and I've said it before, I think they're at a point where it is worth getting like you will actually have stuff to do if you buy the game um and i think in the last you know last month or so it's it's hit that point so i'm really excited to see as they do more and more content because this this game is a really cool concept and uh and they're getting enough of those time sinks in there of like buying a house and then maintaining it make sure you have enough to it, it's, a, it's very much a survival game um but because it's such a rough, uh, rough launch there's not very many people playing it yet and so i think that over the next six months you'll start picking up the players um you'll have more people playing and and it'll become much more fun so yeah so that's uh that is pretty much it cool good luck that now okay so now hold on you so so you told people a couple of months ago don't don't touch I, when this it was game, originally released so what would you say to somebody yeah, now and, that's on I th yeah, I think that now, uh, if you were to buy it today, there would be enough to where you'd feel like it was worth. I, if there were more players, that'd be better. I, I don't think saying that there's not enough players is the reason not to get a game. Oh, I disagree. That's just making. Well, I, but, I, but I think if it's now to a point to where if you got, if, even if it was on one server, you got 50 people to play it. Okay, that yeah. For you, it would be a good enough game. I mean, that's the thing is you only need one your server to have a decent number of people. So Absolutely. if you can get a server that has a decent enough number of people on there, I think it definitely would be worth it. Um, but the problem is, is, you know, most of the servers have 10 people. Uh, so, okay. So let's say you got 10 would, people to play. It would be a lot of fun. Would you recommend this game to somebody right now? Yeah, I would, I, especially, okay. you know, because then I have somebody to play with. I, this game would be a lot of fun to play with. <laughs> couple other people you know what i'm saying like yeah no i got if you, i yeah. had a couple other people if i had a couple other people to play with this game would be a lot of fun and it is i enjoy playing it but i'm not getting the full experience that i think this game could have if i had some other people as well cool so. um yeah that's that's good stuff all right so um i mean yeah unturned you're more than welcome to go check out the patch notes um we'll yeah. have a link to it that you can go through, but it's uh, just some additions that they did, fixes and tweaks. Um, yeah, uh, one thing I will mention as a note on that, though, he said all the objects, nature assets, and vehicles on my to-do list for the new map are done. So, oh, cool. So I'm assuming that that means that they will fairly soon be releasing um, that new map. Yeah. So, so we'll, uh, we'll probably see that in the next couple of weeks, next month. Yeah, I would imagine so. Um, do we have another game to give away? Yes, so I will go ahead and open up a new points raffle. So this is going to be exclamation point giveaway. Um, we'll do another 30 points. And uh, for this game, we're, we'll give away a copy of Dirt Rally. Oh, cool. And so 
Yeah, so Dirt Rally, I will pull up, I'll put a Steam link in there so you can check it out. Um, but yeah, so this is, a, this is a racer game. It's currently $60 on, uh, which, who knows, I mean, that's, if you buy it right now, 60 bucks. Um, but it's Dirt Rally, and I'll put a link to the Steam page so you can check it out. Exclamation point giveaway, and you can enter for that. We'll give it away right before the end of the show. Yeah, and I don't and have I've, current players uh, this week as I'm remote, um, and it's not the easiest thing to set up and configure. But I do want to mention that Battlegrounds, every single week, uh, I believe, besides the first week the game launched, the, the, every week has been a an all-time high player count. Uh, so two days ago, yeah. uh, which would have been Sunday, uh, they had 186,916 uh, concurrent players. So they are rapidly oh, wow. approaching that uh, 200,000 mark. I would imagine within the next couple of weeks it's going to be there. Cool. Yeah, I mean, they are they've done very imp- impressive things with their with their numbers of players and i mean more power to them i think that they've done a really good job of um of not having bugs you know there are bugs but you know releasing and saying and acknowledging them on on twitter which is a huge thing because when they have a problem they'll say hey we see this problem or when they fix it they do a very clear explanation of of what the problem was and I, I think that that's that's a big thing for having people being comfortable that you are doing things, even if they don't hear from you. Because remember when they we had two weeks or you know three weeks of, of not really hearing anything. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, well, they've come back and you know they they put out a really good update. Um, you know, I think that right, they didn't make any excuses. You know, they didn't they just say, oh, you know, it's fine, it's fine. They they followed up a kind of like a two week period of silence with a good patch. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, I think that's a good sign. Um, you know, that's what they need to do. And I, I think that this game, from from everything that I've seen, I don't see that it's going to be dropping in popularity. Like, I don't see anything that's like, oh, this is the death nail or it's going to start slowing down. I, you know, I just, for me, it's still a lot of fun. Um, and I'm not constantly, that's the thing that drives me crazy that I just always, always am raging at the end of an H1Z1 night is that I run into bugs or the shotgun didn't work or, you know, whatever it is, hacker came in and killed us all. Like those type of things just make me not want to play. Um, and I, I don't run into those. I can play a full night of, of battlegrounds and not run into that problem. And I think yeah. that that's one of the reasons that it's been so successful. So. Uh, I, I can't disagree with you. I mean, I can't disagree with you at all. Um, Current, pl- uh, excuse me, not current players. Probably tip of the week. I don't have the intro. Um, okay. But uh, what is what? Yeah, I could, but it's going to be very loud because I cannot control that. Uh, I cannot oh, control no, that. Fine. So it would be. I mean, unless people want their car speakers to be blown out, which I thought was probably not the best idea, I'd say we just roll into it. All right. So I will just do a little bit of a talking intro into the tip of the week. How about that? Yeah, sure. That works. Okay, so tip of the week's where I go through, and I will give a tip either for a specific game or maybe I'll give a tip for gaming in general. This week, I'm going to be giving a tip on uh, Battlegrounds. So in Battlegrounds, now with this tip, um, this was given to us by Saul, um, Saul Greatman from our uh, from our chat, and he's a uh, fan of the show. And he actually gave me a Reddit post uh, that was put together by xtyler73 um, that had some ton of really helpful uh, tips for battlegrounds and so what we'll do is have a link to this and it has a video um, that goes through a lot of these things uh, I think it's probably about a uh, 15 minute video that goes through all these different tips I'm not going to be going through it but I'm just, I just kind of picked out a few of the of the really good ones uh, but you will have a link to where you can check that out watch the video for yourself and uh, and let us know if you if you found some of them helpful, or maybe there's some of them that I'm not going to bring up today that you say, hey, that's a really good tip. Uh, I would encourage you to maybe email us, send us a message, just to let us know, and maybe it's one that I can bring up during tip of the week. So in here, um, some of them that people don't, and I don't know if this is a bug, maybe this is something that will change, but you can jump higher than normal by pressing jump, crouch, and W all at the same time. I'm always pushing shift, trying to run and jump but if you press jump 
crouch and W all at the same time, you will jump higher than normal. Um, another thing that doesn't make it, it, it doesn't seem to always work and maybe I'm not pressing the right things, but pressing C will make you dive in the water. I'm always holding down and kind of aiming down and eventually goes underwater. But one trick that you can do to instantly go underwater is to press C. It'll make you dive down. And then uh, pressing space bar will make you rise up again. Uh, so this is easier than moving your mouse all the way up and down, which is what I've been doing. So this is really helpful because it gets frustrating when someone's shooting at you and you're in the water and you're struggling to uh, to go under the water. And then uh, another tip here is all levels of vests give a capacity boost of plus 50. So upgrading your level of vest doesn't increase the amount of items you can carry. Um, so even if you get the level one vest, that is a plus 50 to your uh, to your carrying capacity, just the same as the level three vest. So um, getting the uh, the higher levels, so to the level two and the level three will not give you additional space uh, beyond that. So, um, and then the uh, level three bags obtained from crates have a unique leafy camouflage to them. I didn't, didn't know that. Um, so if you can get a level three bag from there, it does actually look different than the level three bags that you find out in the world. Um, and then going into first person is sometimes help you see the plane or crate easier. So yeah, so you're talking about switching back and forth and there's probably about, I'd say about 30 different tips in here that, uh, that you can go check out. It's a, a full video where he goes through them all. Uh, but as I said, I will have a link to the original post, which then has a link to the YouTube video and you're more than welcome to go check out, check it out for yourself. And so that is tip of the week. Thank you very much, sir. Um, yes. Uh, and thanks to everybody that, uh, came out here on, uh, on a Tuesday night. Uh, if you haven't been here on a Tuesday night, we do this show live each and every week here on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash infection podcast. We're here. Pre-show starts around 645. You get a 10 or 15 minutes of Brian and I's banter uh, before the show. And then you get to tune into the show live, interact in the chat, win some games. Uh, there's really no there's no disadvantage. I don't do any editing. So you're not you're not you're not missing yeah. out or on any you're not getting any extra. It's just there's no reason not to be here. So uh, yep. if you can do that, you can tune in live every Tuesday for that. Very good. So do we want to go ahead and roll for this? Yes, sir. Good on everything else? Okay. All right, Donnie PC Games, congratulations. You have uh, won a copy of Dirt Rally. So I will send you a link in, uh, in Twitch. Just check your other messages, and you should have it there. So congratulations, Donnie PC Games. I encourage you to go check out his stream. He streams on a regular basis. He streams a lot of Arma 3 things. Um, uh, here on Twitch. And I think we have him as uh, one of the channels that automatically yes. starts streaming when we're offline. So when he is streaming, you may see him show up on our channel every once in a while. So I encourage you to go check out his channel, give him a follow, and uh, support him as well. So yeah, that now I, I, I hope you realized when he signed up for the giveaway that if he won, he has to stream this game or Brian will get very upset. So Donnie, make, oh, sure, yeah. you, make, sure, <laughs> make sure you make sure you stream the game or Brian will be heartbroken uh <laughs> yeah, at least once show me that you're actually yeah. doing something with it. <laughs> so yeah, you can follow him on twitch at uh donnie d-o-n-n-i-e p-c games with an s um you check him out uh let's see brian what else do we oh, what's the game of the week again so for game of the week we will be doing friday the 13th unless everything is broken and for some reason, okay. it, doesn't, it didn't get released. But, Possible. Yeah. So I would say, um, you know, just make sure that. Uh, yeah, I, I, we'll, we'll see if, if for some reason it doesn't. I'm sure everybody will fall back to Battlegrounds, but we will plan on doing Friday the 13th. And uh, if you don't have it, make sure that you uh, you get it purchased. Yeah, I, I was able to play it some today and, uh, you know, it worked. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'll be able to stream more tomorrow. I'm, I'm on, under NDA or embargo or whatever with that one as well until tomorrow. Um, I think tomorrow morning I'll be able to actually talk about it, maybe stream. So then I'll be able to tell you 
or show you we get it. how the game we get works. It. You're so important. You're a big shot podcast. We get yeah, it. Yeah. You, know, you got you're so you're so busy. You got all the you got all the hookups. You got all the connections. It's a <laughs> yeah, bit. not exactly what's going for, but. <laughs> Um, Brian, where can people find you and where can people find your website, Brian? You got some new blog posts out. Yeah. If you want to find me on Twitter, um, at Boise computer and, um, and you know, I check that I, I I'm logged in probably half the time to my infection our infection account and then half the time on my personal one. But if you want to tweet me something directly, that's not necessarily even gaming related or not, uh, to the podcast itself. And we're welcome to tweet me at Boise computer uh, and it's B O I S E. And then my blog is bite of tech, B-I-T-E of tech.com. Um, and I've just been writing some more nerdy uh, hosting Linuxy things. And so if you're into tech, um, you know, I, I do have other articles that aren't specific to hosting. And I'm going to be attempting to just kind of write a little bit more um, as we go on through the year, put more content on there. So you're more looking to follow that blog, bite of tech.com. Uh, if you don't follow our Discord group, if you don't follow our Steam group, Go to our website, infectionpodcast.com. On the right-hand side, we have uh, places that you can join our Steam group. You can join our Discord channel. Uh, also, we have towards the bottom of the right-hand side, we have a, uh, a link that takes you to a lot of the different, like TuneIn, just a lot of different places that you can find our audio version of the uh, of the stream and, uh, and maybe listen to it while you're on the road, uh, maybe while you're at work. Uh, so if you, go to, uh, if you go to our website, on the right-hand side at the bottom, also, I encourage you, if you use an app to listen to maybe other podcasts, uh, but for some reason our podcast isn't on that app, let us know because I like to go in and make sure that we're listed everywhere uh, and that we're listed properly. So if for some reason, maybe you don't have the right number of, um, you know, it doesn't have the right number of episodes or for some reason not everything is listed there. I really encourage you to let us know so that we can make sure that uh, that we're reaching all the places we can possibly reach. Um, and that's all on the right-hand side. So make sure, and also our YouTube channel is on there as well. So maybe you, you do listen to us in the podcast form. I still would encourage you to uh, to go and subscribe to us on YouTube. And just, you know, those are easy ways to support the show and to let us know that you listen. So, and that, that's encouraging to us as well. So Yes. Yeah. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Brian. Um, we'll be announcing our next board game, uh, Saturday board game event uh, in a couple of days here. Um, it will Just so everybody can mark their calendars, it's going to take place on Saturday, June 10th. Uh, we're going to figure out what game we will play. It'll be sometime in the late afternoon uh, or into the evening. We'll announce all those details probably in the next uh, week or two here. Um of course, uh, join our Discord. You can jump in on the Friday night game night, Friday the 13th. Um, and there, I'm sure there's people playing Battlegrounds in there right now. And that if there's not right now, there will be after the show. Um, people are absolutely yeah. loving that game, uh, which is there's super cool. There's three people playing it right now. So there are. If, if you're looking to people for people to play Battlegrounds with, excellent group to go in because we have people any time of the day <laughs> ready to play from all different types of uh, time zones. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, you can do all that stuff. And then, of course, our website, you can find a whole bunch of links there. So, Brian, thank you very much. And uh, we will see you next. Uh, we'll see you next Tuesday. All right. Um, thanks, everybody, for tuning in to another episode of Infection, the survival podcast. Our website is infectionpodcast.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig, thanks to the folks down here at uh, Wilmington's Big Talker FM who allowed me to use their studio uh, to bring you the show live tonight. Thanks to everybody uh, that made this happen. Join us for our Friday night game night, and if not, we'll see you next Tuesday. Have a great week, everyone.